We are back to answer your questions. For those of you who do not know, you can ask Lisa and I a question and we will answer it as part of our mailbag segment. If you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with a question, we'll answer it. It could be about NWSL, the United States Women's National Team. It could be about my hats. It could be about <laughs> rules, contracts. It could be about, you know, starting 11s, you know, teams, plays with whatever. <laughs> but you got to leave the five-star review on Apple Podcasts and you got to leave your question. And we'll stand it. Did you read this before? Because I put in there about your hats and I love that you put it on air. That's amazing. Listen, listen. <laughs> I love to talk about style and profile and everything else. So, you know, I, I feel like if anything, we almost don't have enough time to ever get into that kind no. of stuff. So if people want us to get more into it, you got to let us know. You got to let us know. Uh, but, you know, when we were looking through some of these questions, uh, we actually like to filter through some of these and, and try to maybe actually find some questions that maybe actually already have some answers, right? Yeah. And be able to maybe try to give our, you know, not a, uh, our perspective, you know, sort of now that there has sort of been some clarity on these questions, because believe it or not, some of the questions that people have are some of the same questions that Lisa and I have a lot of the times as well. Uh, so we're going to shout out uh soccer girl 11 here who asked us about julia it's like hey like she's she's been out for a little while she's actually had a, a significant injury for some time uh you know is this the type of injury that could be you know way heavier now more than we possibly knew and honestly it was a fair question and here we are now um, a little further into the into the year, a little uh, closer, right, to the mm -hmm. Challenge Cup happening. And not only that, uh, there has been a preseason that's been in full swing already since February 1. And there have been, uh, you know, preseason rosters that dropped and not only dropped but got edited, right, ahead of the Challenge Cup that's coming up. And one of the things that happened on the Angel City side of things is that, you know, hey, like they were asked about that and addressed about that. And uh, a player spokes or a spokesperson for the franchise went ahead and said they don't expect Julie Ertz to compete in 2022, but they, however, do have her player rights and are ready when she is to go ahead and welcome her with open arms into the market as part of the Angel City family. So there's not a lot of detail within a statement like that, right? Mm -hmm. In regards to the thing or the root or whatever. But it is confirmation that I think people were speculating a bit about uh, yeah. in terms of are people going to see Julia to play uh, in 2022? And it sounds like that's more of a no than anything yes. else. Yes. Yes. And I think that it, as much as like, I, I balance this line as well of like being a fan and wanting to know everything about these players' lives and why aren't they here and what are they doing, but also like this is their lives. And if they come out and make a statement that they don't want to play, we can maybe infer about why that could be, but there's a million different reasons. And it could be her personal life and her personal information to not tell the fans, to not even tell her club. It could be a certain situation there. There are just a lot of different levels to this. Um, her husband, Zach Ertz, got moved. He's now in Arizona, so that could have something to do with it. I mean, at least they're at, both on the West ish coast together there's just like so many different factors coming into this but i think it's pretty safe to say that it, that we will not see julie Ertz in 2022 i mean as of the statement she's made uh and come out and said and angel city has agreed with and the spokespeople have said um yeah not really looking like we're gonna see her and she could still be recovering from that injury that she suffered in 2021 although she played throughout the olympics in in tokyo we didn't see her during the regular season for chicago red stars because she was injured and and trying to recover from that knee injury um and she's taken a beating over the years there's there could be a lot of different factors as to why she is not stepping onto the pitch this year um but angel city does have her rights they made a trade for her with chicago so they have her rights We'll see kind of what happens as as we know more. We will tell you guys for sure. We'll do our yeah, best. For sure. And uh, we're going to take another one here and shout out uh, TCMIATA who uh, asked us, you know, do the United States Women's National Team members have to sign uh, contracts directly with the clubs now? Um, did the allocation slash paid by U.S. soccer concept officially go away? Should we be expecting these deals to be published? 
And obviously what we're seeing is the answer to that is, uh, is yes, there is what we've been hearing in the news lately that we've been reading now that the agreement to a settlement has been in place, right, for the United States Women's National Team and U.S. soccer in the previous lawsuit, is that a CBA has to be ratified. That is the next step, right? So with the $24 million settlement that got agreed to, with $22 million uh, in back pay and a $2 million um, fund to sort of uh, maintain and help and support um, former players and future players in their retirements uh, will be in place. That also include a promise uh, for equal pay that was going to be contingent on ratifying a new CBA. And what we know is within previous CBA and now probably likely into the future that the U.S. allocation system is something that is likely no longer to be in place as yeah. U.S. soccer is still partnered with NWSL, but not in a managing sense. So what we've seen over the course of this off season are a ton of new contracts for in the past players who were considered uh, or labeled as United States allocated players. Right. So yeah, Sam Lewis, right. Was probably that first player kind of kicking things off as, as, as a, a trade was made for her with between Kansas city and North Carolina courage. Um, and then we saw a really, really big one with Chicago red stars signing four former national team caliber players uh, to club specific contracts with Tierna Davidson, Alyssa Nair, Mallory Pugh, Casey Kruger as well. Uh, and today, uh, as we just talked about, uh, you know, Washington spirit going ahead and signing Kelly O'Hara to a one-year deal uh, to keep her uh, in place with, with Washington spirit for 2022. So this is, this is a trend that uh, we really saw, get kicked off, you know, kind of last year, but really sort of kind of taking on a new um, kind of regular kind of sense of normalcy moving forward uh, into, into 2022. And we're going to continue to see it moving, you know, in, into the future, I'm sure as well. Yes. I, this trend will continue and, and players will be signing with their clubs. Um, it's for sure. I, I foresee that happening, but other players still have contracts like yeah. to kind of live out. So that's another turn of, of this coin. And it's why it hasn't all happened with every single player right now at this moment, because if you sign a two year deal, a two year contract last year, you still have to live out another year of that. So give it uh, the next few years, the next several years before all of these players kind of trade over to their, their club team. And then as the CBA hopefully comes out between men's women's side and u.s soccer at the national team level i think we could also see some changes then again once that happens but of course there's no timeline for that and and those conversations are going to take a long time it's been talked about already for such a long time so to actually find a conclusion and come to that it's going to take a little bit longer but um i like these questions that we got today Sandra. a little personal questions about julie Ertz and and what her status is about contracts and u.s soccer national team hit us guys we love these questions for our mailbag segment we want to hear from all of you guys about them whatever it is sandra's hats you know our <laughs> wish list starting 11. we got one before i think uh, many months ago when we were doing these that was like okay, you can't pick um, these seven players, but yeah. which players do you want to create your U.S. Women's National Team starting 11 from? And then they can't all be young players and they have to be this. There was like a lot of different qualifiers. We had a lot of fun with that. So anything that you're wondering about, you're curious about, leave us a question on Apple Podcasts with a five-star review and we're going to answer it during our mailbag segment because we like these. And as the season's starting up again, we're getting rosters out, preseasons. Um, the FAWSL is, is continuing Ask us all the questions. We're here to answer them. I love it. I'm 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 going to be looking for a question from you specifically, probably about my hats, Lisa, because you you bring them up. <laughs> so let's let's do it. Let's I love let's your start, hat. Let's start That's integrating why. more like sports athleisure wear style type questions totally. on this show. Let's do it. I'm totally. Excited. 